Hello and welcome to the video about GeneMark. This video will teach you how to use GeneMark, what everything in GeneMark means, and why it's important. GeneMark provides us with a graph that provides us with the locations of each base pair and with the start and stop codons in each gene. So what are start and stop codons? Well, codons are made out of three amino acids, each of which is made out of three base pairs. Now what are base pairs? They're nucleotide pairs. You put them together and each makes an amino acid, which then becomes part of a codon. There are three start codons, ATG, GTG, and TTG. Start codons can also code for the amino acid methionine, which is why we use GeneMark. GeneMark allows us to look at all of the start codons and see which ones begin a gene and which ones are just another amino acid in the protein. Stop codons, on the other hand, only serve one function, and that is to stop a protein and cease production. There can be a lot of starts in one gene, which is why we use GeneMark, so we can determine which start actually begins a gene and which ones are just regular amino acids. Now, opened up before me, I don't have GeneMark. I have the website Pecan. Why do I have Pecan? I have it out for a couple reasons. The main reasons are that it provides me with information about each individual start codon. There are different programs called Glimmer and GeneMark and Starterator that call different starts. These are, once again, start codons. The number it lists is the number base pair it is at. So, for example, this start is at base pair 9504. This gap number here is talking about how many base pairs are between it and the gene before it. So it provides the start codon, the stop codon, if you look here, down this column, all of the stop codons are the same. This is because, as I said before, stop codons can only stop a gene. They serve no other function. This length number is the amount of base pairs long this gene is. The number of base pairs inside of the gene varies from protein to protein. This is the tape measure protein, as it says here. And the tape measure protein is the longest protein in any bacteriophage. So I've explained what start codons are, what stop codons are, and what the length and gap are alongside the different types of start codons. GeneMark is strange as in it calls the GTG start codons and the ATG start codons, but it cannot read the TTG start codon. This is something to take into consideration when annotating a gene. However, this will not affect this demonstration because it is an ATG start codon. So here's how you pull up GeneMark while annotating a phage. If you are in Pecan, you go over here and you click on Host Trained GeneMark. It should pull up this graph, and this is GeneMark. If you look over here, you can see these numbers and these ticks. So this is 100 base pairs, 200 base pairs, 300 base pairs, and 400 base pairs into the genome. Now looking at this, you may be confused as to why there are six different graphs here. Each of these is a reading frame. Now, what is a reading frame? Well, each amino acid is made out of three nucleotides. Each nucleotide is counted as a base pair. However, because there are no gaps inside of a phage's genome, it's just one continuous strand of base pairs, there are a few different ways to read that DNA sequence. Here's a sentence made out of three-letter words. Each word will represent a codon, and each letter will represent a base pair. Now you have three different ways of reading this. You can start by breaking it up at the first letter. So each, each codon has to have three letters. So that's one way to read it. Another way to read it is to start at the second one. A third way of reading it is to break it up after every three. So only one of these makes sense as a sentence that would be the third one. Well, you can look at each of these as a different frame. All of them have the exact same sequence of letters here. However, only one of them makes sense. The different frames are different ways of reading the same sentence. The sentence, however, being base pairs and a bacteriophage genome. Part of our job is to find out which reading frame is being used. And one way to do that is to look at the coding potential. So as I just explained, you can look at each reading frame as a different way of reading the same sentence, you could say. Now when I was giving you the example of the cat ate the rat, I only showed you three examples. 
However, there are six reading frames. You may be wondering why that is. The reason is because there are a couple different ways of reading the genome. There are forward frames here, and there are reverse frames here. Now what that means is the forward frames are like I showed you. The cat ate the rat in sequential order. If they can only be understood being read backwards, then that is a reverse frame. These top three go forward, while these bottom three go backward. If we remember from Pecan, the particular protein we were looking at was starting at base pair 9504. In order to find the start 9504, we have to scroll over and find it. Now, I'm going to break down the graph. I've already explained the different reading frames, but now I have to explain why we choose the reading frames we do. And to do that, I need to explain coding potential. Now, coding potential is represented by these spikes in the graph. All coding potential does is allow us to see whether or not there can be a protein in a certain DNA strand. It's like seeing if there are any legible words inside of a sentence, like I explained earlier. The sequence of letters never ends, and so we're just trying to find where we can read it. When it's possible to read it, these spikes show up. And so in order to determine where the where a gene is, we need to find these spikes and choose the frame that has as many as possible. So now that you know what these spikes are, I'm going to explain the upticks, the downticks, and the line. The upticks each represent a start codon. Now if you remember, each start codon can also code for a certain amino acid. Because of this, each gene has numerous upticks inside of it because it's just indicating the presence of a potential start codon. Now not all of these will be new starts because they're all inside the same gene before another stop codon appears. It's our job to find out which codon is actually a start and which codon is just another amino acid. So those upticks represent start codons. These downticks represent stop codons. As I explained earlier, stop codons only serve the function of stopping a gene. If you run into a stop codon, you will always be finding the end of a gene, or it's just part of a filler sequence in between genes. These right here are an example of random stop codons in the middle of a filler sequence. So now I've explained the upticks, downticks, and spikes. So what's this long bar here in this bar? So those actually represent complete genes. The previous gene was up here and ended right before 9500 here. And our tail measure protein begins at 9504. So that's an example of two sequential genes that are in different frames. Now since this is the tape measure protein, it's the longest protein in the genome sequence. As such, it starts at 9504 and it continues all the way to 13181. Here there's a downtick. This downtick is immediately followed by an uptick, which means there is no gap between the tape measure protein and the following gene. Even though the line looks continuous, this is not all the same gene. The stop codon means a gene has to end. But why is the next gene right here instead of anywhere else? Well, let me show you why it can't be the others. If you zoom out here, this next gene contains all of this coding potential, all of these spikes, whereas none of the other frames do. And because of that, this is a fairly obvious pick. However, there are some cases where it's a little tougher to decide where the gene is. And that concludes this video. Thank you for watching How to Use GeneBook.